Hello everybody, uh, coming to you again to make another video. Uh, today, um, what I want to talk about is um, um, pornography and um, how it relates to the giants of Genesis 6 and um, Enoch and Jasher and some of the other um, books. Uh, first, I want to get started with um, 1 uh, 1 Corinthians six eighteen, which says flee fornication every sin that a man doeth is without the body But he that uh, committeth fornication sinneth against his own body Okay um, so I was watching a video about uh, Pornography and how you um, it's demon possession and, and basically it's like uh, worshiping uh, Baal or Moloch. Um, it's just devil worship, basically is what it is, and demon worship. And um, it got me to thinking, you know, um, uh, Jezebel worshiped Baal. And it, it, it was known that back then that uh, Jezebel would, um, they would have sex magic, right, in, in the temple and everything. And that's one reason that God was mad at the king at the time, um, because of his wife. And um, so I started, you know, researching it more and and putting it with, and then just this kind of revelation came to me, and I and, and when I realized it, I, I thought I'd share it with you guys. Okay, well, um, if you look at Leviticus twenty one through twenty three, I won't read the whole thing because I will hope that y'all go and um, check those things out. But um, it says um, it talks about. Um, like in verse 5 it says I will set my face against that man and against his family and cut him off um, and all that go a whoring after him to commit whoredom with Moloch um, from among their people and the souls that turneth after such as familiar spirits and after wizards to go a whoring after them I will even set my face against that soul and cut him off from among the people okay and then it goes on and it says stuff like um, if a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. If a man take a wife and her mother, it is wickedness. They shall be burnt with fire, both he and they, that that there be no wickedness among you. Okay, so it's saying, you know, if, if, if you practice homosexuality or if you're watching, you know, homosexual um pornography or lesbians or whatever that you know it's it's an abomination to the lord it says that if um if a man have a a wife and a mother so if he's having sex with it, with a wife and the mother then that's an abomination to the lord and wickedness right and you see that in pornography and if a man and if if a man life with a beast he shall surely be uh put to death and ye shall slay the beast and that's interesting because and it says the woman also don't lie with with an animal but it's also interesting how you see that on but you see bestiality on um on the internet right but also it's interesting how beast is also associated with satan so in a way to me what it was kind of saying is like that if you are um engaging in these things that demons themselves are causing you to do it or you're actually you know fornicating with demons and then it goes on and it talks about if a man take his sister, um, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, um, sees her nakedness. You see that on pornography, um, incest. Um, if a man um, shall lie with a woman having her sickness. You see, I was, I just Leviticus kind of talks about like all these different kinds of things, you know. And it's all um, sexual immorality. It's all um, an abomination to the Lord. And it... it it's all there in pornography and I think that's one reason why they do it is because they they want to do everything that's contrary to what God says right the demons and the fallen angels and Satan wants them to do that okay Jeremiah 32 uh, 34 through 35 says but ye set their abominations in the house which is called by my name to defile it and and then to me, that's kind of talking about, well, we know that we are the temple of God now, right? We're the temple of God. So, um, but ye set their abominations in the house, which is called my by my name to defile it. So 
we are the temple of God. So when you, when the demons are coming in and and you're having sex with, and you're having like sex or you're watching pornography like that, it's like you you are defiling your house that God gave you. And they built the high places uh, of Baal, which are in the valley of the sons of Hidon, to uh, cause their sons and daughters to pass through the fire unto Mullet, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. Um, okay, so we know that um, this is the main thing that I got that I thought was very interesting, okay? Because a lot of these people who are in pornography are um, demon-possessed or they're being, you know, controlled um, by other people who have demons and fallen angels over them um, in hopes to corrupt all of God's people. And we know that they are in that industry and people who aren't even in that industry but are obsessed with sex and that are um, uh, nymphomaniacs and things like that, they are obsessed with size. They're obsessed with breast size, with, with butt size, with penis size. They're, they're obsessed with it, right? It's like one of their main things that, that, that they just can't get over. And I'm sure you've known people like that in your life. They're just obsessed with those type of things. And if we look at Ezekiel 32, or 23, 19 through 20, it says, Yet she uh, multiplied her whoredoms in calling to remembrance the days of her youth, wherein she had played the harlot in the land of Egypt, for she doted uh, upon their um, uh, per 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 I forget how you say it, with whose flesh is as the flesh as asses, and whose issue is like the issue of um, horses. So what it's saying here is that she, um, that, that it, it's speaking about um, Israel and Judah in, in, in the spiritual sense, but it's also just God saying that, you know, that this isn't a good thing, that the flesh, the penis size was like the penis size of donkeys, and their, their semen that came out was like the semen of horses. See, so God describes this stuff about how these, and he calls it whoredom, that they lust after that, that they, they're lusting after that type of flesh because it's not, it, it, it's really not normal and it's not, um, that shouldn't be what you're lusting after in, in, in those senses when you're, when you're um, having sex or really when you're making love because when you're making love it's only supposed to be between a husband and a wife that God put together and made one flesh. Okay, so... Um, now, now this is interesting because um, they're obsessed with size and um, a gi the giants came from the watchers the fallen angels having sex with women we see that in Genesis 1 through 4 which says and it came to pass when men began to multi multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for, uh, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that. When the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were, were of old men of renown. Okay. Um, after the um, uh, God flooded the earth and He wiped um, the worst of them and the worst of them out, right? Okay, we know that we after that in Genesis we in Genesis six we see that you know the flood came, He wiped all of them out, um, most of them, not all of them, but most of them out, and um, and these um, these giants. When they died, they became um, demons, basically. And we look in Enoch, First Enoch, um, fifteen, and it says, "Then addressing me, he spoke and said, Here, um, neither be afraid, O righteous Enoch, you scribe of righteousness, um, approach hither, and hear my voice. Go, say to the watchers of heaven, who who have sent you to pray for me, ye ought to pray for men and not men for you. Uh, wherefore, um, 
have have you forsaken the lofty and holy heaven which endure forever and have lain with women and have defiled yourself with the daughters of men have taken to yourselves wives have acted like the sons of the earth and have um, begotten giants uh, you you being spiritual holy and possessing a life which is eternal have polluted yourselves with women have um, begotten in carnal blood have lusted in the blood of men and have done as those who are flesh and blood do uh, these however die and perish therefore have I given to them wives that they might cohabit with them that sons might be born of them and that this might um, be transacted upon the earth but ye from the beginning were made spiritual possessing a life which is eternal and not subject to death forever therefore I made not wives for you because being spiritual your dwelling is in heaven now the giants um, who have been who, who have been born of spirit and of flesh shall be called upon the earth evil spirits and on and on earth shall be their habitation evil spirit shall preside from their flesh or proceed from I'm sorry evil spirit shall proceed from their flesh because they were created from above um, from the holy watchers was their beginning and primary foundation evil spirits shall they be upon the earth and the spirits of the wicked shall they be called um, the habitation of the spirits of heaven shall be in heaven but upon the earth shall be the habitation of terrestrial spirits who are born on the earth um, but the spirits of the giants shall be called it says okay it said the spirits of the clouds shall be called shall be like clouds which shall oppress corrupt fall can contend and bruise upon the earth okay remember that they they will they will oppress people they will corrupt they will cause people to fall okay um, and then it says here it's got a footnote that says the Greek word for cloud here uh, ne nef he las may um, uh, uh, it may explain a more ancient reading it may be closer to an ancient reading um, fi he lim nephilim okay so um, that's I just thought that was kind of interesting that the clouds and nephilim too um, um, and nephilim and I forget there's another way to say it this kind of sounds like defile also like to defile people and women and everything else and then we see that's what pornography does you know I mean it's it defiles women it defiles men and yeah um, they shall cause lamentation no food shall they eat and they shall be thirsty they shall um, uh, they shall rise up against the sons of men and call and against women for they come forth during the day of slaughter and destruction right so they're gonna come up uh, shall rise up against the, the sons of men and, and daughters so to to possess them to cause them to do these sexual immoral acts you know um, this is crazy <laughs> And then if you look in Enoch 19, it says, uh, Enoch 19, 1, Then Ariel said, um, here, here the angels who cohabited with women appointed their leaders, and being numerous in appearance, um, assuming, and, or, and it has a footnote down here, um, being numerous in appearance can also mean assuming many forms. Okay? So assuming many forms, um, um, so they can make themselves like men, in 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 giant size or women in giant size. And if you just Google on the internet giants, you'll see giant women, giant men, and and the pornography industry is obsessed with these things, obsessed with size. Um, um, made men, um, they assume many forms. Made men profane. Um, and cause them to err so that they sacrifice to devils as to gods for in the great day there shall be judgment with which they shall be judged unto they are consumed and their wives also shall be judged who led astray the angels of heaven that they might uh, salute them um, 
and I, Enoch, I alone saw the likeness of the end of all things, nor did any man being seen it as as I saw it. Okay, so what you're um um what you're seeing here is that um okay, so the the wives also shall be in judgment who led astray the angels of heaven that they might sleep them. Okay, so that also shows that that God passed judgment on the 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 carnal fleshy women who 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 interact in these things, who who act in the movies, who who um who watch these things or and even it even goes down to modesty because Paul says in there that that you should not um you should women should should cover themselves so that they don't cause the angels to to um to do the same thing to fall again or to lust after them that's why modesty is very important in men and women especially women because God made women beautiful so because they're so beautiful they should they should cover up because you don't want to cause, you don't want to be a stumbling block to, to another man or to a woman, um, and it also shows that you have love for everyone out there when you don't just, you know, show your body off to everybody, you know. And and a lot of times, if you look at it now, um, they will have clothes that cover them up, but they're skin tight clothes. So it's like the flesh is covered up, but it's so tight that it basically makes them look like they're naked, right? And that's just that. It, it's not good, you know. I mean, the body, I, I, you can take it for whatever you want. It's not me. Go read in the Bible. Go read in Corinthians. Um, Paul says that. He says, you know, cover yourselves so that, like, you don't cause people to stumble. And it just shows love for your fellow human being when you have that modesty. Okay. Um, so they became evil spirits, and they possessed people to do certain things. Um, these were the giants on the earth, right? Genesis 6, 4, um, like we read, there were giants on the earth in those days. Um, and now the demons possess people and make, make them lust after big things um, to corrupt men like they did in the days of Noah, right? And Matthew 24, 37 says... But as but as the days of Noah were, so shall also also the coming of the Son of Man be. I mean, that's one of the. There's a lots of things that um, that went on in the days of Noah that are going on now. Now this is just one of them, right? This is one of the corruptions that's going on. You know, they were lusting after big things. They were lusting after um, the fallen angels and that fallen angels were lusting after them and and then it even says that the you know that the the giants the nephilim they were having sex with everything too and eating everything they were consuming everything even sort of consuming people so we see that really they don't have any regard for anything the nephilim didn't have any regard for any kind of life any kind of um um holiness um any kind of anything they consumed everything they raped everything they took everything Okay, they devoured everything. Their bellies were never full, right? Um, and so that's what we're seeing now too, you know? Um, and once you get addicted to pornography and these other things, you can't get enough of it. Your belly doesn't get full. You just have to see these things. And people who are very hardcore addicted to pornography, the more, the first they might start out watching some soft pornography, and then it gets a little bit harder, and then a little bit harder. And then they have to act out these things in their life you know they can't just have normal loving you know sex they have to do what these people in the in the porns are doing right because really they're being demon possessed by watching this porn they're opening themselves up to demons and then these demons come in and then they got to go have the sex that they saw in the porn and then it just gets worse and worse and worse to where they watch worse more pornography worse pornography worse pornography and worse pornography you know and it destroys people's lives. I mean, it just, just destroys everything. It defiles them. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, same are even the Nephilim having sex with humans because these giants um, uh, survived the flood and um, are here today. So we know that the giants survived the flood. It says the giants were um, on the earth in those days and also after that. In Genesis 6, 4 it says, and also after that, that the giants, the Nephilim, were on the earth. So they're still here now. Um, okay, so if you're... I mean, and I'm no better. I mean, 
you know, I, I've, I've watched pornography in the past and, 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 and all those kind of things, and I, I don't do it anymore um, because I understand now what it is. You know, I understand that it's it, it, it can lead to demon possession and that it's an abomination. And and with that knowledge is why I don't participate in, in, in it anymore. You know, and I don't watch it because um, cause I understand the truth, right? And that's why I'm making this video um, to let y'all know, you know, the truth about the matter. Um, okay. Um, such people who do um, commit these acts and are obsessed with these acts and obsessed with size and obsessed with these things um, um, they are a danger to us and to everyone around them um, because they're reprobate in their mind and uh, Jeremiah eight twelve says uh, were they um, ashamed when they had committed fornicate uh, were they ashamed when they had committed abominations nay they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall in it, right? They will fall among them that fall. Like we read in Enoch, they, the, the, they will cause people to fall. The, the demons will cause people to fall. And also the fallen angels, what do they do? They fail. So when you participate in these things and you don't think that there's anything wrong with it, and it, think about that, it says neither... Uh, could they blush they're not even ashamed of these acts that they're committing they think that they're stars they think that they're you know Hollywood stars which they are because Hollywood is evil and demon possessed and, and satanic so they don't but they don't even care if they're proud of these things they're doing right um, and they'll fall like the fallen angels and the demons um, therefore shall they fall among them that fall in the time of their visitation they shall be cast down saith the Lord Okay, and then Romans 1, and Romans 1, 21 through 32 pretty much says it all. I mean, it just talks about, you know, just all of it. Um, it starts out, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to a bird, and to a four-footed beast, and creeping thing. Wherefore God also gave them up unto uncleanness, um, um, uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Porn. Um, who changed their, the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served creature more than the creator who is blessed forever and ever. Amen. Um, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections for even their women did change the natural use um, into, which, uh, into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman um, burned in their lust one towards another homosexuality men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that um, recompense of their error which was met and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge uh, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do these things which are um, not convenient being um, uh, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, um, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, and implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only uh, do the same but have pleasure in them that do it now that's not a good example of people who are in the pornography industry and people who are obsessed with it i don't know what it is i mean it's reprobate i mean basically reprobate mind is someone who um they don't have a god conscience you can tell them over and over that what they're doing is wrong and they can't understand that it's wrong 
um, or just think about it. It's like an abused woman who is in a, an abusive relationship mentally, spiritually, and physically. You know, the man may mentally control them and tell them what they can do and what they can't do and all this. Or spiritually control them, won't let them go to church, won't let them get close to people who are godly because they, because the man probably he has demons in them. And I'm just using this as an example. Or um, physically, of course, abusive to them, right? And the woman will say stuff like to a counselor or somebody else, Oh, but I love them. You just don't understand. I love them so much. They don't know. That woman doesn't know what love is because she's reprobate. She's caught in um, control by demons and, and, and Satan. She's reprobate. And, and, and I mean, because when you're, when you're being abused and in that type of situation, if you're close to God and close to, and understand what the Word says, you know that that's not the way you're supposed to be treated and how a husband should treat a wife. Because in Ephesians it says that a husband should treat his wife like Christ treated the church, which means you should give your life for the woman, which means you should um, just give everything of yourself, you know, for your wife, right? Not abuse her, but, but you know, protect and, and, and cover and love. Right, so I'm just using that as an example. How people who are reprobate, they they will say the craziest things, you know, because they don't have a God conscience. First uh, Timothy four one through two says, "Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in latter times um, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of de of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their consciences sheared with a hot iron." All right, I mean that's what these people are. Their consciences have been sheared. They don't understand, you know, what, what God has to say about these things and, and what um, holiness is, you know. And holiness is different than morality. Morality is kind of um, a trick of the world to get you to do, you know, what kind of is right. But it really doesn't have too much to do with God's holiness. I hope you kind of understand that. Okay. Um, these people need deliverance. So if they're in this industry or you know people who are obsessed with it, you need to get them deliverance from these demons and this oppression that's, that's on them, these unclean spirits. Um, Psalms 34, 17 says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth. He delivereth them out of all their troubles. James 5, 13 through 20 says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. And if you're addicted to pornography or you're in the pornography industry, you're sick. You are you're sick. You've you are we see in the Bible that many times people who have epilepsy, it was a demon that had that gave them epilepsy. You know, people are sick, it was it's unclean spirits that are in them that are making them sick. So it's like you need prayer, you need people who know how to do their deliverance to get that sickness out of you. Um, okay, going on, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall rise, up, rise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall for, be forgiving him. See, so I mean, it's a sin, so if, and you're not lost, you're not just forsaken, if you'll just turn from your wicked ways and turn back to God, he'll forgive you and he'll heal you with those things and take those obsessions and um, addictions out of your life. Confess your faults, your faults to one another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. Um, um, the virtual fervent prayer uh, of a righteous man um, availeth much, right? So fervent praying, praying a lot of a righteous man, um, um, prevaileth much. Um, Elijah, Elijah was a man much, much to, I'm sorry, King James sometimes gets to me, I get tongue-tied because my brain's going so fast. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months, and he prayed again and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one um, convert him, let him know that which, which converteth the sinner from the er error of his way shall save a soul from death, 
and shall hide a multitude of sins okay so that's what I'm just trying to do I'm trying to give you this information so not to make you feel bad about yourself not to you know pass judgment but to get you to change and save your soul from death and to you know get rid of those multitudes of sins and turn to Jesus and you'll be delivered from those things and saved from those things Yeah, these people need deliverance or to be and okay this is a hard teaching a hard thing for people to to understand and to come to grasp this but this is the truth also if you tell somebody these things show them the truth and like God says in Ephesians uh, or Thessalonians he'll turn them over to a lie he'll 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 let them believe a lie and be deceived by Satan, you know, because they're so reprobate. When that happens, if, if, if I'm sharing this with you and and you don't want to change from your wicked ways or or, or you share it with somebody and, and, you know, they don't want to change from their wicked ways, this is what, you know, the Apostle Paul, through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, which is God talking to him, says to do. It says to turn them over to Satan for destruction of the flesh, so they will learn not to blaspheme. And we see that in 1 Corinthians 5, 1-13. Now listen to what um, the Holy Ghost says through Paul. It is reported commonly that there are there is fornication among you, and such fornication as it is not so much named as among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife, and ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you, for I verily as um, absent in body. But, but but present in spirit have judged already as though I were present concerning him that hath so done this deed right in the name in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ okay um, Paul is also saying that this person is supposed to be a believer but he's practicing these acts that person you need to get that person out of your presence okay that's and this is a believer supposedly that's doing these things that did this when ye are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our lord jesus christ to deliver such a one unto satan for de, for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of our lord jesus um your glory is not good Know ye not that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, um, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I write unto you in an epistle not to uh, company with fornicators, yet not not altogether with fornicators of this world, or with the covetous or extorters, or with uh, idolaters, for then must ye um, needs go out of the world. Um, but now I have written unto you not to keep company, if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or a or, or covetous, or idolater, or railer, or drunkard, or an extor extor extortioner, with such a one, know not to eat. Uh, for what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within, um, but them that are without God judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Okay, so if you know a, a somebody who's saved and they're participating in these type of videos and movies or they're watching them participating in them by watching them you need to let them know the truth and then if they do not want to turn from their wicked ways you need to stay away from that person you just you just need to first timothy 1 19 through 20 says behold faith and a good conscience which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck because right, that's what they can do. They can cause you to become shipwrecked also. Of whom um, Hamarius, I think that's how you said it, and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Okay? You should um, 
but you should pray for them, but have nothing to do with them or their acts. Okay, and we see in Ephesians 5, 11 through 12, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Now listen to this, verse 12. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Okay, so um, it's kind of a hard teaching to, to do because, you know, people don't really want to hear that type of stuff and, um, you know, it's kind of hard to talk about. But um, I just, I, I got that from the Holy Ghost about the giants and the size and how they're obsessed with it and I just wanted to share it with y'all. And um, you can get deliverance, you know, from these things. You just find somebody who um, who knows how to do deliverance in your area and and tell them the truth. Tell them the problems that you're having and give it to God. And, you know, if you're not saved, then, you know, get saved. You know, get saved. Call in the name of the Lord Jesus. Believe that he's the Son of God. Um, you know, ask him to, to take away all your sins. Be baptized for the remission of sins and be filled with the Holy Ghost and, and you won't want to do these things anymore um, you may at times you know it, it, you may be tempted because we all know temptation will come but um, Jesus is the way of escape from those temptations and just call on him and and he'll come and you know help you and deliver you from these things Okay. well um, wake and watch for Yeshua uh, God is love and I love God thank you guys Amen.